Okay, let's now talk about the cavities in the nervous system, what we call your, your um, ventricles. Okay, so in the brain, especially, in, you know, in the brain you have four cavities that run like this. So you have, run into something like this, like that, like this. Okay. okay, so we call these, this is called your lateral ventricle, two of them. Lateral ventricles. This one is your third ventricle. This is the fourth ventricle. And then this right here is called the central canal. Those are the cavities in the brain. Two lateral ventricles, the lateral ventricles are found in the cerebral hemisphere. So in your cerebrum, that's where you find those. Your third ventricle runs in the middle of your diencephalon. That's where you find that one. And the fourth ventricle will run along the brainstem. Brainstem, find that. And the central canal runs through the spinal cord. So that's where you find these particular holes inside, inside the brain. Now, in each of these ventricles, you have a capillary system, a capillary bed, which means, means, means blood vessels. And these blood vessel capillaries, they get able to filter, filter blood to form a fluid. All right, so this capillaries inside your each ventricle is called your, called your choroid plexus. And that's the capillaries, the blood vessels that can filter blood to make the fluid. They make CSF, which stands for cerebral, cerebral spinal fluid. Cerebral spinal fluid. Okay. You make about you may, you may make about maybe 500 ml per day of it is made. And at any one time, you may have about 150 ml in the brain. Okay, now the, the job of this CSF, it helps the brain to float. Because it's, it's, it, it sits in the, again, the, the subarachnoid sub space which, which surrounds the brain. So it, it, it provoke, the brain can float in it, buoyancy. Really can reduce the brain weight by up to, to 99%. So the brain doesn't crush itself, it's always floating in the fluid, and also protects the brain. Because by being, by having the brain in basically water, the brain can, can move slowly versus going very fast. It gets, you know, like if you, if you did this for example, the brain doesn't go flying into your skull. That's called a concussion. It moves very slowly, it's buoyancy and resistance to movement. That's the job of your CSF. Now the CSF has a certain pattern that it flows through. So we're going to look at how the CSF circulates, all right? So let's, so let's start it here in the, in the say, the, the, the lateral ventricles. So let's do it there. But again, it's, it's made in all, in all four ventricles. But we begin with the lateral, lateral ventricles. So the path of CSF is this. Path of CSF, okay? Begin to your lateral ventricles there, it flows through an opening. So, so the bridge between the lateral ventricle and the third ventricle is a bridge here, an opening here called your interventricular foramen. So it flows from lateral ventricles through the interventricular foramen to enter the third ventricle. And then the third ventricle has a bridge between the third and fourth, that bridge here is called your 
cerebral for your cerebral aqueduct. Okay, so third through your cerebral aqueduct to enter the fourth ventricle. Okay, and then once it's in the fourth ventricle, there are openings in the fourth ventricle called apertures on the side or even down the middle. So from the fourth ventricle, a lot of the CSF will escape out, escape out into what's called your lateral aperture. And some will flow, of course, into the canal, central canal below there. So it goes both, it goes both places. It goes out, escape out, and some flows down into the central, central canal. And from, from lateral aperture, it then goes into your subarachnoid space. And now it's around the brain. Okay, like, let, me, let me kind of miss it. Little clean here. Let's add so quickly recapping is LV to interventricular foramen into third ventricle into fourth. Sorry, to your Cerebral aqueduct into fourth ventricle, and then some of it will go into the central canal, some will pass into the apertures. Apertures and from there, it escapes into your sub. Arachnoid space, and from there, and so now it's around the brain, and then it eventually will leave this subarachnoid space to flow into things called arachnoid villus. These are little extensions that will push the CSF from there into your dural venous sinus, back in, which, which is basically your blood. So it made from the blood, circulates and then flows back into the blood. Sometimes the CSF cannot drain out because you may have some blockage here. When that happens, it's something called, it's something called hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus plus, is when the CSF can't drain from the system here. And so then the, 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 the skull enlarges. Skull enlarges when you are a newborn. Eventually, you have to shunt it, create a tube, find a tube that pushes it in, in, into into the subarachnoid space and drain that tube into the stomach to pull the CSF out. Otherwise, the water in the brain would eventually crush the brain. That's called hy hydrocephalus. Okay, we'll pause here.